Hello, Edu Magicians. Welcome to the Edu Magic Podcast with your host, Dr. Sam Fesich. Dr. Sam is a professor of education, author of Edu Magic, and a pumpkin spice latte fan. This podcast is designed for pre service teachers. Remember, friends, teaching doesn't begin at graduation, but during that first class at 8 a.m. Let's get this party started. Hi, I'm Kim Polishuk. And I'm Jen Giffen from Shooks Shooks and and Giff, the the podcast. podcast. A part of the Education Podcast Network, just like the show you're listening to right now. Shows on the network are individually owned and opinions expressed may not reflect others. Find other interesting education podcasts at edupodcastnetwork.com. Hello, friends, and welcome back to another episode of the Edgy Magic Podcast. Today, I'm joined by an amazing future teacher, Taylor Nichols. Taylor reached out to me on Twitter, or maybe it was my Google form. I don't remember, but somehow we connected, and I just love her passion for uh, including all students in the classroom, and that's kind of where our conversation is going to go today. So, Taylor, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you for having me. Taylor, would you mind sharing with my audience a little bit about your teaching journey? What got you interested into education? Why did you pursue this uh, a degree in education? Um, when I was in high school, I was fortunate enough that I had two teachers who really impacted my life. Um, and that kind of pushed me towards my career, knowing that I wanted to do something in my life where I was able to impact others. So When I was in high school, I had a home ex teacher. Her name was Miss Dilk. Um, For whatever reason, I happened to have Miss Dilk in elementary, middle, and high school. For some reason, I was just that fortunate. Um, She taught all of the classes everybody always wants to take the class where you get to take a baby home, you get to sew, you cook. All of those fun classes that the kids beg to take. And I always signed up for every class she had. When I was actually in her interpersonal relationships class, she knew me pretty well and knew that I was in a very toxic relationship. But rather than kind of saying, you need to do this, you need to do that, and being very negative towards it, like a lot of other people were, she always just stood by and supported me. And when we would talk about discussions, she would never make it obvious that she was talking to me, but would stand at the board and would give me a wink or would give me kind of like that side eye, letting me know that this is important and I need to zone in on this. Mm -hmm. And it really helped me. Um, She just had this loving heart for her students. And it touched me to know that I had someone at school that was like a mom. When my mom was at work, I had someone that I could go to and would always be there for me. And I knew that I wanted to play that role and help change someone's life. I also had a teacher in high school um, named Mr. Townsend. He was my English teacher. And I just remember him sitting at the front of the room and he would strum on his guitar and he had created a song about grammar. And other uh, other students would say, that is so weird. Why does he do that? And I loved it. Like to see him up at the board doing something he loved, but incorporating the education into it. And it was so much more fun to sing along with him in high school, to sing along to a song about grammar than to sit and do grammar worksheets. Um, I soaked it up. I actually got to work as his teaching assistant after high school while I was in college, and he taught an inclusive class. And that was very eye-opening for me. And to see him be able to lift those students and all the work he did towards their education and to bring them up and help them strive to reach their goals, that really pushed me towards special education um, to know that there are students who struggle and are in the general education classroom and they need that extra support. So the two of them together pushed me towards education, and then they pushed me that extra step towards special education as well. I think that's so important, and a lot of listeners can relate to having an influential teacher in their life. Maybe it was a subject area in which they're passionate about, and they too got the bug for that for that subject area. But this is a a population of students that you became really passionate about helping and lifting up. And I know that you're you are all about inclusion. Can you share a little bit about what that means to you as a teacher? Yeah, absolutely. Um, 
So my current job actually that I just started is a co-teacher. And that means that I go to another teacher's classroom with special education students. Um, They are mixed in with general ed students. And I'm there to support them, give them that extra help, and um, make sure their IEP is met, which is their education plan. So I make sure that if they need a calculator to complete math, they're getting that calculator. And I think this is important because general ed students, they need to know that you can have a disability and still function, and you're still just as equal as they are. You don't have to be in that self-contained setting. Um, There is no difference between one student and the next. It's just that they learn differently. And I love seeing my general ed students and my special ed students come together as one and support each other and say, Hey, you know, if you don't get it this way, let's, why don't you try it this way? And Mm -hmm. there are times where I don't have to step in and support them because their classmates know that they're struggling and they can help them. And I think it really just as a community in the school builds everyone up together. And if we practice that at school, when they are out in the real world, that community they're going to do the same thing and help build each other up. I think that's incredible where everyone comes together and helps everyone out because that just shows that community, that classroom environment of respect and rapport. What are some ways that a new teacher or a student teacher can help create that type of environment for their students? If they're in a co-teaching class or if they're in a general ed class with students who are included, what are some ways that they can go about, like practically go about creating that type of environment with their students so everyone feels supported, everyone feels valued? So what we do, um, and I'm just lucky enough that I have wonderful co-teachers, we do a lot of, while the math teacher is running the lesson, I may walk around and support the classroom in other ways. And they see that that um, model of teamwork and support mm. between myself and the other teacher I'm with. So daily, we model that for them. This is what it should look like. We respect each other. We help one another. If she needs to step out, I step in and I will teach the lesson. Or she may sit down the entire lesson and I teach the entire math lesson and they see us go back and forth. They see us discuss and we're positive with each other always. And, oh, well, let me help you. Let me pass out the papers. And um, if I see that the math teacher or the English teacher has explained something in a way that I know my students may not understand, I step in and I provide an additional way. Well, Miss Waldrews did it like this, but when I see it, I think of it like this, and then I'll go up at the board and I'll model the same thing, just in a different format. Um, So modeling that relationship for our students is amazing. Um, The only other advice I really have for new teachers to really help with inclusion is to study your students' education plans and know what they need to be successful. In education plans for special education students, they have what is called accommodations. And those are tools that the teacher uses to adjust an assignment so that a special education student can complete it. Whether it means they complete four problems instead of eight, or they always get a calculator, or they have a checklist, or they are allowed to use a graphic organizer. Some things are are that simple when it comes to their accommodations, while other students may need something a lot more complex. But knowing those accommodations and really knowing how your student thinks and is able to grow before you even meet them is extremely beneficial for a special education student. And if you already know that, they can walk in that first day of school, that first week and start off successful and no one really ever knows any different than this is how I'm successful because this is what the teacher provides me and it's working. Yes, yes. I think I I love that you talk about, you know, really knowing that education plan, understanding what accommodations are going to be 
helpful for that student so they can walk in day one being supported. And I think as you get to know your students, you get to know their strengths, their areas of need, some places and where they're really interested in. You can maybe create a lesson that speaks right to their interest or adapt materials that have their their interests embedded within them. For example, I, I've, I observe lots of student teachers and one student teacher's behavior plan. Uh, she was in a classroom for students with autism, an autistic support classroom, and their behavior plans, each student enjoyed something different. So one student really enjoyed trucks, another student really enjoyed frozen. So they had to earn little frozen stickers or little truck stickers to get as they completed their tasks to get free time or to get uh, computer time or whatever, or gym time or whatever, extra gym time or whatever it might be. But knowing their strengths and what they're interested in, I think can also really go a long way when it comes to teaching not only our students with special needs, but all of our students. Yeah, absolutely. Sometimes it really is as simple as a sticker um, and it doesn't have to be some <laughs> complex lesson um, where you spend all kinds of money. It may just be a sticker from the Dollar Tree. Exactly, exactly. So before we go into more about your teaching journey, can you share about some resources uh, that my listeners can go to uh, related to inclusion and how they can best support all of their students in their class? Um, I found two of my favorite resources. One is a website and one is a book. So the website is the National Center for Learning Disabilities. Um, That has resources for students, for parents, and for educators. So as an educator, while you're using that, you can provide that out to parents and students and say, hey, you might want to look at this. Mm -hmm. On here, they have resources resources for you and they have a resource specifically for this when they are struggling in that area. And then the book that I have is Strategy Instruction for Students with Learning Disabilities. Um, That was actually one of my textbooks um, through college and it was one of those books that I had rented and I found it so useful that I went back and paid for it so that I could keep it. Um, It has three authors it is Robert Reed, Tori Lehneman, and Jessica Hageman. Excellent. I'll put those links to those books, to the book and to the to the website in our show notes. If I can add one more resource, I would love to add in Microsoft's Immersive Reader. Oh my gosh. When I was a special ed teacher, I had to purchase lots of different software to have, you know, text to speech and to have um, highlighting and line focus, but Microsoft Immersive Reader does all of that for me, and it's free, and it's a cross-platform, and it, it is a game changer when it comes to helping students access print or material online. It can really help them um, understand and comprehend the the text that they're reading in a way that's accessible for them. So it can change the font. It can change the the um the size, the color, the contrast. I can do um, text-to-speech so it'll read it aloud to me. I can do line focus. It can highlight. It can even has picture supports, which, oh, my gosh, I used all the time when I was a special ed teacher. So I think that's an invaluable resource. Using tech tools um, can really help make that that impossible possible for us. You know. Yeah, absolutely. And if you – Like our district specifically, um, every student gets a Chromebook. So if you're in a district where every student gets Mm -hmm. technology, you don't have to go about using um, a tool like that and pulling kids aside and saying, hey, you can use this as a resource. Typically, a resource that benefits special education students benefits all students. Um, And so you can sit at the class and show all of them how to use that tool. And no one knows any differently that this student needs that to be successful they can all use it to be successful. Yes. Uh, Let me just repeat what you just said. They can all use the tool to be successful. That is key. Thank you so much, Taylor. That's beautiful. All right, so we're going to change gears a little bit here. And I want you to, I want you to think about, you know, back, um, Whenever you were, or you're currently, you currently are studying at IU Southeast. <laughs> I almost said Southwest. At the Eddy University Southeast. Can you share one of your favorite teaching moments and, and why? Why that has been a favorite teaching moment of yours sure. when you think so back? my favorite teaching moment, um, I had been working with a student and 
we had been talking about disabilities and their disability and how they can advocate for themselves when I'm not there, how they how they can tell someone this is what I need to be successful without me having to step in and do it. They need to know those things. And so we had spent a lot of time discussing it. And I was in a classroom with them, one of those co-teaching models where they were included with their gen ed students. And another student made a rude comment to them um, when they had attempted a math problem and they weren't correct. When that student said something negative to them, rather than shutting down or deciding I'm never going to do this again, I'm never getting up at the board, in front of the entire class, my student looked at that student in the eyes and said, I'm not stupid. I have a disability and I struggle in math, but I'm trying and I'm doing my best. And she walked right back over and sat in her seat and kept working. She did not let that negative comment drag her down like so many people do. And I was so incredibly proud of her. I thought I was going to cry. <laughs> That's an incredible moment. And and having that skill of being an advocate for yourself is is an incredible skill we need to be teaching all of our students um, and fostering that throughout their education career. I think oh, – and, and just to say I'm trying my best, I'm doing my best, and to know that, that – that that you could ask for anything better. That's a great story, Taylor. This is the Edu Magic Podcast, and I, I want you to chat a little bit about a professional learning network. I, I know sometimes whenever we go to college, sometimes our cohorts are small, or maybe we feel like we're the only fill in the blank major here in a class. What are some ways professional learning network network has helped support you as a future educator? So when I started the education program, I remember the first, my first day, my first class, my cohort was fortunately pretty small. um, And we had separated between elementary ed and special education. For special education, there were three of us, um, including myself. So I had, I had two classmates that I knew were going to be doing assignments that mirrored mine, and I was going to spend a lot more time with them than I was the elementary ed majors. So when that first day, we all just kind of looked at each other and we were, we just knew like, we're going to have to get along. We're going to have to spend a lot of hours together. And since then, we have stuck together like paper and glue. We have done every assignment together. We've studied together. They have pulled me through the program at times where I thought I wasn't going to make it. And we just use each other to build each other up. We use tests as a competition, who's going to get a higher grade, but we never pull each other down and leave each other behind when we've got the higher grade. We just make a joke out of it. And I'm, well, I'm going to get you next time and I'm going to beat you. And we spent so much time together that I know throughout the rest of my career, when I have a special education question, I can go to them. Or what are you doing when you do this type of lesson? What would you do? I have a student that I'm seeing this from. What do you think I should do? And having that positive relationship with my classmates has provided me with a relationship that I will have through the rest of my career, especially knowing with special education, um, it's hard to connect with some of the other teachers because what we do is so different. And if the teachers don't quite understand that a lot, it can be hard to relate to them. So building that relationship within my core heart, my cohort was very important to me. Um, and I think it was very beneficial in spending that time to build those positive relationships. I agree. Having a strong cohort and people that that you connect with, that you're in classes with, that you're studying with, that you're supporting each other day in, day out. That's an incredible, an incredible gift to have as a, as a future teacher. Thank you. Thanks for sharing that. So what is the, if you could narrow down all the advice that you've been given as to, to be a teacher, what is the best piece of advice that you can provide my listeners and how do you incorporate that advice into your teaching? I would say don't be afraid to be yourself with your students. I'm always very honest with my students and I always appreciated when my teachers and my professors 
were honest with me and not always about like, I need to lie to them about this, but be honest with who you truly are. I'm goofy with my students. I'm very honest with them when they've done something that I, I expected more from them or when they've done something and I expect them to grow from it. I'm always very, very honest. When they ask questions about my life, I'm very honest with them. And I think when you can build that level of comfort and trust, they're going to come to you and be comfortable with who they are and trust in you because you did the same thing with them. Yes. I'm nodding my head again because, you know, you can see that. Yeah, I love that that idea of just being yourself with your students. There, there's a phrase, I don't know if, you, if you've heard it, but don't smile till Christmas or, or something like that for new teachers. And I, I just, that, that phrase just really irritates me. Do, do they have the same phrase over there in Indiana? I, come on, you have, you have to be a real person and a human and show grace, show kindness, show thoughtfulness uh, to your students and get to know them as people and let them get to know you as well as a person, that you are a whole person outside of being a teacher. I think that I think that's such a powerful message. Especially showing them that we make mistakes. My students know that I'm a special education teacher and I am not a math teacher. And when we do math, sometimes I make mistakes, silly mistakes. Or sometimes it's even something as simple as I'm walking and I spill my coffee on my shirt and I just kind of rub it off and say, oops, and we all laugh together and we keep going. Letting them see my mistakes helps them realize that I'm a real person too outside of being a teacher. Yeah, I, I think I think that's a great place to end our conversation. To know that that everyone has strengths, areas of interest, and areas need, and places where where we it's okay to fail forward. It's okay to take a risk. It's okay to mess up. And I think showing our students that is a pretty important message for all all teachers to hear, pre service, future teachers, and new teachers alike. It's okay to mess up. Just be kind and gracious to yourself. You know, I, I think it's I think it's hard to sometimes it's it's easier for others to forgive us, but we can't forgive ourselves maybe for messing something up. I I once saw a TED Talk, but who is it from? Oh, it's it's um, every child needs a champion by Rita Pearson. That's who it is, and she talked about how she taught a whole math lesson wrong, and she came back the next day and said, "I am so sorry. I taught this whole thing wrong." And the student said, "We know you were on a roll. We just let you go with it." And I just think. I I just think that just goes to show the importance of it's okay to mess up. It's okay to make mistakes, own up to it, and just be a, be a person with your students. Taylor, before we end our conversation today, is there anything else you would like to share with my listeners? Um, I, I don't think so. I just think that um, even those teachers who, who aren't as comfortable with inclusion and they're worried about how it may play out, to give it a try and just do your best and know that your special education teacher in your school is there yes. to support you. Now, I know my listeners are going to want to contact you and ask you all the questions. So how can they find you online? Okay. Um, my Twitter is at Taylor M. Nichols. My Insta is Taylor Michelle Nichols. And then my Facebook is just Taylor Nichols. So lots of combinations of Taylor Nichols. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. And I'll, I'll put all of those links up on our on our show notes for the episode. Taylor, thank you so much for your time today. And I know my listeners really enjoyed this episode all about inclusion with resources, strategies, practical advice to help that new and future teacher thrive in that classroom. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm glad I could could sit and chat. There you have it, Edu Magicians. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe and share it with your friends. For more Edu Magic, check out sfesich.com and follow Dr. Sam on Twitter and Instagram at sfesich. Until next time, you have the Edu Magic within you.